This is my beginning algebra course. Today you're going to take test number one. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. I want to be absolutely clear. You cannot pass a math exam without studying for the exam. There are many subjects in the academic system where you might be able to study for maybe uh, an hour the night before and you can ace the exam. That's not how math works. With mathematics, you need to go back over all the problems and make sure that you know how to do them. Now, a lot of students will look at a problem, and they'll look at the solution to the problem, and they'll say, yes, I know how to do it, and then they'll just go on to the next one. That's, that's, not, how, uh, that's not the proper way to study for a math exam. When you go back to, and look over the problems, you actually have to do the problems. You have to do the entire problem to make sure that you can do the problem completely and correctly. When it comes to math exams, you need to prepare days ahead of time because oftentimes you'll come across something that you don't understand and you'll have to go back and figure it out, and that takes time. So I would say two days is the absolute minimum that you need to study for a math exam. You can take two or three hours uh, one day and two or three hours the next day or however you want to do it, but you cannot cram the night before or uh, one hour before you take the test. That just doesn't work with mathematics. So if you haven't studied for this test, don't take the test because you're just wasting your time. And if you've only studied for maybe one hour, don't take the test because, again, you're just wasting your time. And if your study method was to look at the problems and say, I know how to do them, again, don't take the test because you're just wasting your time. You have to do the problems to make sure that you know how to do them. The only reason that you wouldn't do the entire problem is if you're absolutely 100% sure that you know how to, how to do uh, the problem. We did uh, hundreds and hundreds of these problems, so if you are, are confident that you know how to do uh, maybe 50% of the problems, you don't have to do those that 50%. But the other 50%, you need to do all of them completely and correctly, and only then will you be absolutely sure that you're ready to take the test. Now this test, uh, like all my tests, is 25 questions, and each question is worth four points for a total of 100 points. I want you to be aware that if you don't factor completely, you're going to lose points. We have an example here. Here's the original problem. Then we factor. We get to this point here, and if you stop here, you're going you're gonna to lose two points because the expression is not factored completely. So just be aware that in some of these problems, it's going to look like you're done, but you're not. You have to factor completely. So here we have the difference of two squares, and we can factor it to x minus 2 times x plus 2. So be aware of that. And notice that I have the, uh, the uh, instructions on how to grade your test. You want to look at these instructions before you take your test. And you can actually look. I'm going to have these instructions you can probably uh, take a screenshot of these instructions and you can have them right next to you when you take the test. That's, that's okay. Please be aware that you're going to lose points if you don't write your name. You're going to lose points if you don't write a title for the test, if you don't write the date, if you don't write the course title, so on and so forth. If you don't circle the problem number, if you don't rectangle your answers, as usual, these are all things that you're going to lose points on. I require you to do these things in my courses. This is just basic stuff that you need to do whenever you take a math exam. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the exam, and you can take screenshots. Notice the instructions. I want you to uh, keep a. I want you to staple the cop a copy of these questions with your with your final answers. So you're going to use this uh, test, and you're going to have a separate piece of paper and you're going to uh, write all your work on, on a separate piece of paper, and then you're going to staple this entire exam to that paper and keep it for the rest of your life. So here's the, the test. Get a screenshot of that. And also a screenshot of these last four problems. So you want to clear everything off, off uh, the table. You should only have paper and a pencil, no computer, uh, no textbook, no help from anybody. You need to do this on your own. And the test should take somewhere between one and two hours. Also, I forgot to mention that in many of these problems, there's a, there's a part A and there's a part B. 
So part A would be worth two points and part B would be worth two points for a total of four points for that uh, problem. Now before you take the test, I just want to give you an example of uh, a problem that students might have trouble with. For example, let's say that you see something like 1 minus x squared or negative x squared plus 1. Do you know how to factor this? If you don't know how to factor this, that means you haven't studied properly for the test. You need to go back and do those types of problems. That's just one example of a problem that you would get uh, on this test uh, where you might not be familiar with it, but again, it's one of the problems that we did. All right, so go ahead and take the test. You have the instructions on how to grade the test right next to the test here. You can look at that while you take the test. And when you're finished with the test, we'll uh, look at the answers and we'll talk about how to grade your test. All right, we're back. So let's look at the answers. You should be done with your test. Get a screenshot of these answers. Again, here's the instructions on how to grade your test. Now if you scored 90 to 100, that's an A. That means you know the material really, really well. If you scored 80 to 89, that's a B. That means you know the material, but you have a few minor issues you need to work on. And if you scored 70 to 79, that means you know the material, but you have some major issues you need to go back over. And if you scored anything below a 70, that means you don't know the material, and you need to go back and do tons and tons of uh, problems to make sure that you know this stuff. So what do you do? Well, again, you just do what I, what I just said. You go back and do tons and tons of these problems in your textbook until you're absolutely sure that you know how to do every single type of these problems. And then you can go on to uh, the, next, uh, the next class. But uh, whatever your grade is, you need to record that because that would be your actual grade if you were taking um, any course in the country. This is just how things are graded. So you need to keep track of how well you're, you're doing in this course by, by, writing, by keeping a record of your, your, your uh, test score, and then you're going to keep a record of all your test scores and add them all up, and that's going to give you an idea of how you would actually perform if you were taking a, a course in school or a course anywhere. So I just want to tell you, if you didn't do very well, that just means that you probably didn't study for the test. 99% of the time, that's what it means. You didn't study for the test. If you didn't do well in this test, you need to start improving quickly, or else you're just going to be wasting your time in this course. Now, if you did do well on the test, I'm very proud of you. Good job. If you didn't do very well, again, you can go on to the next class, but you need to start performing pretty quickly here. So all that said, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class.